Hi everybody, welcome to this video in which we are going to discuss powers in AC voltage circuits. And this is the first video in a series of three. First of all, let's start with calculating the power in a resistor. And we start off with the DC situation. And in this situation we have a DC voltage, which is shown over here. And to that voltage source we connect a resistor R over here. And we're now going to calculate the power in this DC situation, which is equal to the power P is the voltage U times the current I. And the unit of power is, of course, Watt. We can also replace the U by I times R, and then we get the, the power is equal to I squared times R. Or we can replace the current I by the voltage U over R, Ohm's, uh, Ohm's law um, using in this equation. So then we get P is U times I, which is equal to U squared over R. Well, that's a DC situation. Now let's, let's look to the situation in which we have an AC voltage. So what happens then? Well, we have an, um, a situation depicted over here in which we have an AC voltage source over here and we again connected a resistor over here. So this impedance is a pure resistor. And this is a sine wave voltage, so we can express that in a mathematical way like a sine or we can um, we can write it down as a cosine because a cosine is a sine only 90 degrees shifted in time. Well, let's um, write it down as a cosine and then we get E as a function of T is the amplitude of this voltage EM with a capital E times the cosine omega times T. And this omega is two times P times the frequency of this voltage source. So we now have an expression in which we can see that the voltage is the absolute value, so the amplitude of that voltage times the cosine of omega times t. And because this is a resistor, also the current has a cone sine wave. So the current, I as a function of t, is the amplitude of the current, Im, which has a certain value, times the cosine of omega times t. And of course, because of that resistor, the omega, the frequency of the voltage and the current is the same. Now let's look what happens if we make a plot of both the voltage and the current. So this is my voltage, which is the red curve over here. And it has an amplitude in my example of one volt. So EM is one volt. So it has a cosine wave. It starts off here. And after a period, it ends up again at one. We also plotted the current with an amplitude in this example of 0.8 amps. And the blue curve is the current. And of course, EM divided by IM, IM is the resistor value which I connected to that voltage source. Now we can also express the power uh, as a function of time by multiplying the voltage and the current point by point in time. And then we get the green curve, which is the power curve. And what we see is that this power curve is in every situation zero or greater than zero. And it is, of course, because in this situation, both voltage and current are positive. So positive times positive gives me a positive value. And in this part of the curve, both, both voltage and current are negative. So again, minus times minus is plus. So we get a plus value, a positive value over here. So my, uh, my power is always positive. So also my average power, which is the dashed line over here, is a, power, uh, is a positive value. And we can see that it's um, between this top and uh, this value, so the top top value, uh, exactly in between. So it's 0.4 watt in this example. What we also see is that the frequency of this power curve has been doubled. So the power has a double frequency, a double frequency with respect to the frequency of the voltage and the current. 
Well, let's look if we also can calculate what we have seen in this graph. So again, we have my voltage source over here and I have my current through the resistor over here. What we're going to do is we are going to calculate the power by multiplying the voltage and the current. And by doing that, we are going to make use of this goniometric formula, which says, says that the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta equals half times the cosine of the product of alpha and beta plus half times the cosine of the difference of alpha and beta. So it's half times the cosine of alpha plus beta plus half times the cosine of alpha minus beta. So let's multiply E times I, and then we get the instantaneous power P, which is equal to P is E times T, which is EM, the amplitude of the voltage, times cosine omega, omega T, times the current, the amplitude IM, times the cosine of omega times T, which is equal to the amplitude of the voltage times the amplitude of the current, e I, uh, EM times IM, which is written over here, times the cosine squared of omega t, which is written over here. Now we can uh, use this goniometric formula, and then we get it's equal to Em times Im times a half times the cosine of the sum of alpha and beta, and alpha and beta are omega, omega times t in this example, so it's the cosine of 2 times omega times t, which is written over here, plus half times the cosine of alpha minus beta, omega times t minus omega times t, which is the cosine of 0, which is 1, which has been written over here. So this is an expression of my instantaneous power at every time, um, which has been shown in this curve. And what we, have sh which, what we have seen in this curve, that double frequency is also expressed in this formula, because here we have that double frequency. We can also calculate the average power, which we have seen over here, the dashed line, which was 0.4 watt in this example. And by calculating the average power, we have to take the average value of this expression. So let's do it. The average power P which is also called the active power, is equal to the average of this expression, which is the average of my amplitude, Em times Im over 2, times the average of this function over here. Well, the average of a cosine is 0, and the average of number 1 is a number 1, of course. So this leaves us with only 1 over here, so the average power P is equal to Em times Im over 2 times 1, which is expressed over here. So that is the average power. Now let's split up the number 2 by the square root, square root of 2 times the square root of 2. And then we get the average power is Em, so the amplitude of the voltage, divided by the square root of 2 times Im, which is the amplitude of the current, divided by the square root of 2. And by definition, this is the RMS voltage, and this is the RMS current. So the average power in this resistor caused by this AC voltage is equal to the RMS voltage times the RMS current. And the RMS voltage is written by the capital E over here, and the RMS current is written by the capital I over here. So again, we can calculate the average power in an AC situation with a resistor as I load by multiplying the RMS voltage times the RMS current. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.